Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and today we're gonna to take a first look at the Fio FD5. Now, just full disclosure up front, this video is not a review of the FD5. The review will be coming later, but for now, we're just gonna take a first look and see what's inside the box of the FD5, and as well, I'm gonna try and get a frequency response measurement out of it so we can start to get a sense for what this thing might sound like. Now, before we get into that, just a little bit of information about this earphone. This seems to be Fio's latest earphone and it is a single dynamic driver earphone. Kind of seems to be part of a, a somewhat recent trend of premium priced single dynamic driver earphones. Kind of reminds me of like the recent release of the Moondrop Illumination. There's also the Do New Zen that's just come out recently. And maybe this is maybe price wise a little bit more in line with something like the Tansgym Hawk Oxygen and the JVC FDX1. But anyway, I'm, I'm pretty into it. There's not a lot of premium single dynamic driver earphones, at least not in the past year or so, apart from those ones. So I'm pretty excited to see what this thing sounds like. Um, anything else I can say about it? I mean, I know it's a 12 millimeter dynamic driver, beryllium coated, if you're particular about your metal coatings. Uh, but apart from that, I don't really know much about it. So I guess let's just go ahead and open it up. We'll find out what's inside the box and then try and get in the measurement rig. That was, let me try and spin that again. Pretty weak spins, but what we got here is the FD5 box. And I don't know if it stands out. This is actually a little bit of a large box. Let me get on a little extra light. There we go. A little bit of a large box for the table. We do have our high res badge, so you know that it sounds, that doesn't tell you anything actually. Uh, let's see over here, we've got a little bit of details about the build. Uh, they claim that it is a stainless steel body frame, replaceable sound tube design, which I think just means that this thing has uh, swappable filters and I can't quite get this thing in the frame. There we go. Um, it's got swappable filters and then they you know, go on to explain that it is a diamond-like and beryllium plated carbon or diaphragm driver. Wow, that's a lot of different materials in one driver. Uh, over here on the back, there is not much more information. So I think if we're gonna find out anything more about this earphone, we're just gonna have to pop it open. Make sure that high res sticker is nice and in frame so that we don't forget. Never mind, I'm gonna take that out of frame. Got a little magnetic clasp, which is not necessary, but I appreciate. Uh, up here in the top, they've stored some paperwork. This is actually a pretty nice unboxing experience. Actually, it might have neglected to describe the price of the FD5. As you probably have surmised by now, this is not a cheap earphone. I think File is charging around $300 to $320, depending on where you find it. Um, so. I don't know, I guess for that much money, they give you a little bit nicer of an unboxing experience. Here, uh, this paperwork just kind of describes those swappable nozzles. It'll be interesting to see if those have a measurable effect on the frequency response. Uh, and then some sort of large manual that, do you want to spend some time sitting down and reading this right now? I'm gonna say I don't, unfortunately. Let's dip into here. Uh, we've got a pretty nice looking little carry case up front. If I can figure out how to get it out. Unfortunately, this carry case is glued inside the box and you're not gonna be able to get it out. That's not accurate, that's not true. But I am certainly having trouble with this thing. <laughs> Stress, all right. So there's the little carry case. Uh, this is actually a pretty nicely constructed carry case, maybe a little bit uh, overkill, frankly, but I don't know, you're paying 320 bucks for an earphone. You expect a little bit nicer than average. Now it looks like it's got a couple of compartments down in here. Let's see if that shows up in the camera. A couple of little compartments for storing the earbuds individually, which is kind of cute. Uh, and it's got a nice soft material on the inside and then some sort of magnetic leather clasp up there. All right, let's, uh, let's pull this thing out. This is... This is a bit a bit much. Oh my, look at this, the accessories. All right, so I'm gonna guess this is Fios cable. 
And I'm kind of curious what kind of cable file includes. This file does produce quite a few different cables and I am wrong, this is not the cable. This is the toothbrush, which is stuck inside. Of course, with any earphone priced above $200, you expect to get a toothbrush. So it's nice that Fio has obliged there. Uh, you do also get a, I'm guessing that this is a tool that is used to uh, make it easier to remove the tips or the nozzles. Um, here, I'm guessing that this is the set of replaceable nozzles. This is actually kind of an interesting way that they packaged it. Um, let's punch in real quick here. They've got them on a metal plate and they screw into the metal plate. So I'm guessing that they will screw into the nozzle of the earphone, uh, spoiler. But yeah, that's actually a pretty interesting way of storing those, put those aside for now. And um, they do also include, oh, interesting. So I'm gonna guess that this cable, kind of like Dunu's cables, um, will be able to kind of be cross compatible and, and connect to different connection types. So what we've got here is, this looks like a balanced 2.5 millimeter connector. And then here we've got a balanced 4.4 millimeter connector. Uh, either, obviously neither of these is attached to a cable. So I'm guessing that the cable will have some sort of removable ends, which is kind of cool. Cause I don't think that file has really done that before. I don't know. I guess I'm not, maybe not totally up on what files most recent cables are, but I've definitely never gotten a file with cables like that. Here we've got your selection of tips and it is quite the selection, which is fairly typical for file. Um, they do also kind of make some general distinction between them. I don't know if this will show up on camera, so I'll read it. Uh, this is a memory foam ear tips. They call these balanced ear tips. These are tri-flange, which I wanna see what that looks like. Hold up. What does file tri-flange look like? Are they trying to be etymotic? They are trying to be etymotic. Interesting. That's also a really narrow nozzle. Huh, interesting. All right, down here you've got your vocal ear tips and then here you've got your bass ear tips. Um, typically I just use whatever they include stock, which I'm guessing based on the fact that there are two pairs of balance tips here that this, the thing is gonna be pre-installed with balance tips, unsurprising. All right, let's get some stuff out of the way and make sure we don't lose that toothbrush. And then we'll turn our attention to the stainless steel IEMs. There actually seems to be a little bit more back here. I'm not sure. Okay, this is just how the cable is stuffed in here. Very creative file. All right, so for 320 bucks, this is a pretty comprehensive package. Uh, maybe not too surprising. Files generally pretty generous with their accessories. But let's take a look at these buds. Um, and first impression, this cable that the, this comes with is pretty nice, honestly. Like, it's a little bit on the thick side, but not too thick. Anyone wanna count those cores? Seems like it'd be a, a eight core cable. Stretch it out, there's no memory there, which is nice. Lies quite flat. Uh, and then up here, we've got the stainless steel buds. And these things, pretty freaking handsome. Let's go ahead and punch in this camera. Sorry for the motion sickness. But there we go, the Fio FD5. So it's interesting, here on the outside, I, it almost looks like some sort of mesh, like this thing is vented. I actually don't know if it's gonna sound vented, if this thing's gonna sound open, but that's kind of cool. Um, Size-wise, this looks like it's, you know, not especially chonky, but it's also not especially compact. Nozzle length appears to be on the generous side, but not too long. Um, and then, yeah, the ear tips that were pre-installed, as I suspected, are the balanced type. Uh, of course, you've got MMCX connectors, which Fio seems to do in all their IAMs. I know some people prefer two-pin. My personal preference is I don't really care between two-pin and uh, MMCX. I'm fine with either one. 
Uh, but it's actually nice too that they've added this little blue and red coloring to the bottom of it. I think that's actually a pretty classy way to do it. I'm a big fan of the blue and red colorways generally in audio. Like, I don't know, it's it's a little bit geeky, but um, it's 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 a cool aesthetic. And there are some ways to do it that don't look that nice. Uh, and I think that this right here is actually a pretty subtle and aesthetic way to do it. Weight wise, the FD5 is a little bit on the heavy side. I would say probably still lighter than something like the Moondrop Starfield, although I can break out a scale later and actually verify that. But yeah, I would say weight-wise, this seems to be lighter than the Moondrop Starfield, maybe about the same as something like, um, hmm, I don't know. It's a little bit heavier than like your average uh, acrylic shell IEM. Let's go ahead and do a quick fit test, actually. Let's see how this thing fits inside my ears. So that's what it looks like inside the ear of me. I don't know if that's what it's gonna look like inside your ears, but there you go. Uh, and fit wise, this is pretty, it's pretty decent. Um, it's not as fitted as something like a lot of the, the recent BA IMs where they can, you know, carve out the, the shape of the IM to really match the, the shape of an ear. Um, but I don't feel any sharp edges initially on my ear. That seems pretty good and then Size-wise, it's not too large in my ear. Uh, I see uh, Wear On Nation there in the live chat mentioning that it kind of reminds you of the Sony IAR Z1R. Um, I know that that, I actually haven't worn that IEM, but I know that that one's considered a fairly large, chonky beast. And I would say that this is pretty modestly sized. Not compact, not super small, not super compact, but um, I don't think anyone's gonna have issues fitting this in their ears. Isolation seems like it's about average, maybe slightly below average. Um, as far as like, yeah, I would say isolation slightly below average. Uh, as far as like whether or not those vents are actually open, I still can't really tell based on this. Um, but yeah, that is the G the file FD5. Let's go ahead and do a quick um, go to my table and we'll try and do a quick measurement. Um, you know what? I did not. I did not verify if my OBS is set up to accurately reflect what goes on on my screen, but we will, we will do it live and we'll try and make this happen. So let me go ahead and plug this thing in. Um, here is my coupler. So that if anyone is unfamiliar with how these, these measurements work, uh, basically what you do is you take a, uh, an in-ear coupler like this, which kind of attempts to recreate the the, the sorts of audit frequency response or frequency um, amplifications that happen with the inner anatomy of your ear. Um, and this thing is connected to my computer via an Apple dongle, which is also connected to the FIO FD5s for the output. So basically the computer will output a frequency, uh, like a sine sweep that the microphone then records and it graphs it in terms of, you know, how much emphasis the earphone gives at certain frequencies. And for this test, we will go ahead and measure the left earphone. Not that it necessarily matters, but for the sticklers out there that wanna know. And this is where I'm not certain, but let's see if we can get Rue up on the screen. All right, cool. We got Rue up on the screen. So this is the measurement software. Um, you typically, what I will do is I will do um, a little bit of a sort of volume check, first of all. And typically what I, I try to do is aim for a level of minus 20 dB. I don't know that it matters what that level is, but just for consistency sake. All right, minus 19.8, that's pretty good. And I can also say that based on the fact that that is about four bars of volume on a Mac, which is not a universal standard of measurement, um, it seems to be a relatively sensitive IEM actually. So we've got our level set. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a sign sweep and get, a, get an initial reading. All right, there you go. And there is your frequency response of the file FD5. Um, so what we're looking at here is, uh, I mean, a roughly V-shaped IEM. 
um, pretty significant dip between the bass, which is what you have over here on the left side, your, your low end frequency, or, um, and then here at around 1K is kind of like, I would say, you know, for folks that are not familiar with looking at these frequency response graphs, bass, you basically want to look at, you know, from 20 to 100 hertz is your sub bass frequencies, and then from 100 to uh, about 200 or 300, that's kind of like your mid bass is 300. Uh, and then, you know, 400 to 1000, that's where you're looking at your sort of lower mid range. Um, a lot of deeper vocals will kind of lie in this frequency response range. Uh, and then this is pretty typical. You're gonna see a rise from 1K to, you know, sometimes it, it peaks at 2K, sometimes it peaks at 3K, but this is basically the rise that you get, which is basically what happens. This is sort of what the, the, the outer ear of um, most people's, you know, anatomy will do is sort of amplify this frequency range, which is where a lot of like vocals lie. Um, here, this little peak that we've got here, what is that, about five and a half K? I have a feeling that's gonna give this thing a bit of a, a bit of a brilliant sort of um, pretty forward lower treble response, frankly. Uh, and then this peak that we see here at roughly 8K, that's just sort of a resonance peak that happens because this thing is plugged into the coupler. That's pretty typical, you'll see that peak. And generally, when you see this kind of peak in a frequency response, I would just try to ignore that. Uh, but yeah, otherwise it seems like the treble extends fairly well uh, up until about, I don't know, 12K or so, and then it rolls off, which is pretty typical. So that is the file FD5 as far as I can measure. Um, let's go ahead and real quick punch in here because I remember there was something I wanted to check out that I didn't check out yet. And that is how this swapping mechanism works. So here we've got the end of the cable this thing came on. It's a 3.5 millimeter. And I, do I just yank on this? Do I pull on it? Do I twist? It seems like it's a twist. I'm probably gonna break this thing. I'm probably not doing this right. All right, I'm gonna do this right later. I'm gonna <laughs> read the, I'm gonna RTFM um, at a later date. But it is interesting that this thing comes with these swappable tips, which I think is pretty neat from FIO. So that is the FIO FD5, like I mentioned. This is not a review, just a first look unboxing and that frequency response check. Um, I'm gonna spend at least a week, probably a couple of weeks living with this earphone and comparing it to some other stuff that I've got, including the JVC FDX1, because in this price range, I think the FDX1 is kind of like the, I don't know, it's, it's definitely my favorite single dynamic driver earphone. Uh, and I'm curious to see how it stacks up to Fios take here. I can say that based on that frequency response, I'm gonna expect that this thing is more V-shaped than the JVC. I'm gonna expect this thing's gonna have stronger bass impact and whether or not that's what you want or what I want, we'll find out. Um, but that is this video. If you're watching live now, stick around. We'll have a little conversation afterward. But if you're not, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for the review, ding the bell, and then YouTube will let you know when I'm live with the next video, which might be this review. Uh, and if you want to be part of the live conversation like I'm about to have with the folks right now, that bell I think is pretty crucial. But otherwise, uh, I'll check you on the next Super Review.